So this video is basically about the surface structures such as Hunter Schrieger bands, incremental lines of radius, and various surface structures such as perichymata, prismless enamel, Nasmith membrane, which is enamel cuticle, enamel lamellae, enamel tefts, dentino enamel junction, enamel spindle, and enamel rod ends. So these are the structures which you see in. Uh, surface DEJ is another type which is the junction of dentine and enamel which is a scallop structure and enamel spindle and odontoblastic process okay so let's see the um, surface structures and DEJ in detail Hunter Schrieger bands under sugar bands, it is a regular change in direction of roads responsible for the appearance of alternating dark and light strips of varying width. Okay, so there will be dark and light. This is not possible to show it here. So there will be black and white appearance in when we take uh, sections of teeth, we can see the dark and light lines. So these uh, changes is due to the change in direction of enamel rods. Okay, so this alternating dark and light strips of varying width is known as under Schrieger bands. So this is most commonly seen in longitudinal ground section. Okay, so when we take longitudinal ground section, we can see under Schrieger bands. So they originate from DEJ. Okay, so they originate from DEJ and Mm, which pass outwards ending in some distance from outer enamel surface okay so it originates from DEJ and it end end from a uh, little distance from outer enamel surface so this could be due to there are many things it could be due to the change in calcification process calcification will not happen very regularly so sometimes the change in uh, will be rhythmic matter but in various frequency so that change in calcification process could be the reason for Hunter Schrieger bands and uh, they may not be an optical phenomena but they are composed of alternate zones having slightly different permeability and different content of organic material gnarled enamel is an optical uh, optical appearance of interwined bundles of roads at incisal cusp and uh, incisal edge and cuspal tape whereas a hunter sugar bands it is alternate white and dark bands or strips at various uh, width which could be which is uh, which is not an optical phenomena but they are composed of alternate zones having slightly different permeability so slight different permeability with different content of organic matter so that is why it is seen as uh, white and uh, white and black alternating bands. So that is under trigger bands, which is very important. Now we have incremental line of red CS. Next we have incremental lines of red CS. So these are brownish bands which is seen in ground sections of enamel that illustrate successive apposition of layers of enamel during formation of the crown which are known as incremental lines of red seeds. It's nothing but we know in enamel mineralization will happen layer by layer the minerals will be deposited. So this particular rhythmic pattern of apposition okay this uh, mineral deposition by layer by layer okay so in the crown section it is reflected in ground section as particular lines so these lines are nothing but indicative of mineralization rhythmic mineralization pattern so that is known as incremental lines of red seeds so under sugar bands is another type of uh, reflection in oblique uh, light that is also a, another pattern of optical uh, appearance that is white alternative white and black bands in oblique light when we take a longitudinal section so similarly incremental lines of red is also 
a brownish band and which is seen in ground sections of enamel which is indicative of mineral apposition okay so these longitudinal section which surround the tip of dentine from dj in cervical parts which run obliquely deviates to occlusal side so we can see at the tip of dentine uh, which surrounds the tip of tendon which surrounds the tip it is not easy to show in uh, uh, this type of board so so in transfer section so they appear as concentric circle it has been attributed to the periodic bending of enamel roots so it is due to the periodic bending of enamel roots and there will be physiologic calcification happening so why it is important because this broadening of incremental lines may reflect the metabolic disturbance at the time of matrix formation so if something happens so if it is broader then there will be uh, some disturbances happened uh, in matrix formation so the metabolic disturbances is causing this change so we can make out that something happened during the matrix formation okay so that is the importance of this incremental lines of rhesus so that is about uh, incremental lines of rhesus now we have surface structures various surface structures such as uh, enamel cuticle enamel lamella enamel tufts uh, we have cracks rod and perichaemata we have also perichaemata perichaemata also is a surface structure so we are going in detail about the surface structure so we have various surface structures the first one is prismless enamel okay so we have prismless enamel perichaemata rod ends enamel cracks enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts so let's see what is prismless enamel which is present in 70 percentage of permanent teeth and all deciduous teeth which found uh, least over the cusp tip and commonly in the cervical area which is least in cusp tip and commonly in cervical areas and which will not be visible and all the epithelial crystals are parallel to one another okay and they are perpendicular to stria of rhesus so they are more mineralized than the bulk of enamel which is present beneath that okay so that is structureless or prismless enamel so that is about prismless enamel now we have perichaemata perichaemata uh, these are the transverse wave like grooves believed to be the external manifestation of stria of rhesus okay so stria of rhesus which is externally manifested as perichaemata so there will be 30 perichaemata per millimeter in the region of cemento enamel junction and their concentration gradually decreases near occlusal or incisal surface at 10 so here it will be 30 per mm and at the occlusal or incisal edge it will be 10 per mm so it is the external manifestation of incremental line of rhesus or stria of rhesus and enamel rod ends okay so we have enamel rod so we have another structure which is a surface structure which is enamel rod ends okay so these are concave and very in depth they are shallow cervically and deep occlusally and pits of about 1 to 1.5 micrometer in diameter and small elevations which are known as enamel caps okay so we are talking about enamel rod ends okay enamel rod ends in enamel rod ends if it is between 10 to 15 micrometer 
which is known as enamel caps enamel caps and if it is very larger enamel elevations which is known as enamel broach enamel broach sand enamel caps that is enamel road ends okay now we have enamel cracks they are actually outer edges of lamellae they originate from incisal edge and extend to varying distance in enamel in perpendicular direction towards dentino enamel junction so if any crack is present here it will be starts from here towards dj so mostly it will be 1 mm in length so these are known as enamel cracks neonatal line we have neonatal line in surface structure of enamel they are like deciduous teeth when they develop partly before and partly after birth so the boundary between these two portions in enamel is is marked by accentuated incremental lines of rhizus which is known as neonatal line okay so neonatal line neonatal line is nothing but accentuated rhizus line of rhizus which is showing the demarcation of the portion which is formed before and after the birth so some teeth which partly develop before birth and after some portion after birth so these are uh, inter uh, it's our uh, the line which is differentiating these two are known as neonatal neonatal line or ring so these results from abrupt change in the environment and nutrition of newborn in infants so prenatal enamel is better developed than postnatal uh, enamel and perikemata are absent in prenatal enamel okay so that was about enamel mm. Mm, neonatal line now we move on to enamel cuticle okay enamel cuticle they are delicate membrane uh, co covers the crown of newly erupted tooth which is known as nasmith's membrane which is very important nasmith's membrane okay nasmith's membrane nasmith's membrane is nothing but covering of newly erupted tooth okay so so this nasmith membrane are delicate membrane which covers the crown of newly erupted tooth or which is also known as primary enamel cuticle okay so nasmith membrane is enamel cuticle this is secreted after the epithelial enamel organ retracts from the cervical region during tooth development it protects the surface of enamel from resorptive activity of adjacent vascular tissue so the primary enamel cuticle or nasmith membranes job is to protect the tooth from adjacent resorptive activity so we have primary enamel cuticle and secondary enamel cuticle so primary enamel cuticle which covers the entire crown of newly erupted tooth which is removed by mastication which is secreted by post amylo blast whereas the secondary enamel cuticle which covers the cervical area of enamel thickness up to 10 micrometer which is continuous with uh, cementum which is uh, probably mesodermal origin and that is the difference between primary enamel cuticle and secondary enamel cuticle okay so these all are short notes enamel cuticle under sugar bands incremental lines of rhizus perikemata uh, enamel rods nasmith membrane enamel cuticle now we have mm, enamel lamellae these are leaf like structures enamel lamellae are leaf like structures so it will be like leaf like structures that extends from enamel surface towards dj okay so this is external surface so this is dj so it starts from here towards dj okay and which is basically organic uh, and a little bit of mineral composition which originates in develop in planes of tension when road uh, the enamel rod cross such a plane they may not 
fully calcify okay so when tension is there there will not be proper calcification so that places uh, a crack may develop so this crack is filled either by surrounding cells if it has occurred in unerupted tooth or by organic material if it has occurred after eruption okay so the tension happens uh, I mean rod so during the such planes if tension is happening while eruption what happens they will not completely calcify and if the disturbance is very severe there will be a crack formation and if it is before the tooth eruption the crack is filled by surrounding cells and if it has occurred after then there will be organic content okay so that is known as enamel lamellae basically it has three types type a type b and type c type a is restricted to enamel okay so this is enamel this is enamel and this is dentine this is dentine this is enamel so this is dentine enamel junction so type a is restricted to enamel so this will be here okay so it starts from outer enamel surface it will be here that is type a type b is may reach up to dentine okay so if it starts it may reach till here enamel lamellae and uh, it is mostly degenerating cells okay so type c is containing organic material and it may invade uh, it may cross this one dentino enamel junction that is type c so the significance is uh, it is a site of weakness in tooth and may form a road of entry of bacteria and initiate dental caries because it is poorly calcified there is no proper calcification happens here and the next structure is enamel tufts okay so enamel lamellae if we finish enamel tuft is thin ribbon like structure which is resembling a tuft or grass it is similar to like similar to our enamel lamellae so this is like tufts or grass which is created by examining such area under low magnification of ground section so we can observe it when we check it under low magnification in ground section so these consists of basically hypocalcified enamel rods and interprismatic substances so that is enamel tufts so they arise from dej okay so enamel lamellae which is erased from outer surface but this enamel tufts arise from dej okay enamel lamellae arise from outer surface enamel to towards dj so enamel tufts arise from dj and it reach up to one fifth to one third of its thickness and their presence and their development are consequences of an adaptation to spatial condition of enamel that is a adaptation uh, mechanism so it basically significance of enamel tufts is it prevents enamel fracture okay so next we have dentino enamel junction so this particular blue line is dentino enamel junction which is basically scalloped structure so surface of dentine at dentino enamel junction is pitted in shallow depression of dentine which fit rounded projection of enamel it appears scalloped due to the mixing of crystals of dentine and enamel each other so there will be mixing of enamel and dentine or crystals so it creates a scalloped structure okay that is dentine enamel junction so enamel spindles we have enamel spindles next enamel spindles are odontoblastic processes which pass across dj into enamel okay so their end is known as enamel spindles so sometimes odontoblastic process starts from dentine and it crosses the dj and reach up to enamel with a thickened end and they have been termed as enamel spindles 
so this direction of spindles and rods are divergent as rods are formed at right angle to ameloblast and spindles are parallel to ameloblast okay so enamel spindle is always parallel okay enamel spindle which is parallel to ameloblast whereas uh, enamel rods are right angle to ameloblast okay so that is about enamel spindles so we have covered uh, the structure surface structures and other structures of enamel uh, this uh, so we are finishing our part one second part is amylogenesis the formation of enamel so we will be checking in detail already we know how enamel forms in our tooth uh, formation stages anyway let's uh, wind up the session one of enamel so we have learned about thickness, color, hardness, solubility, permeability, translucency, chemical properties, various proteins and various structures. So structures are rods, road sheath, interprismatic substances, uh, more about striations, more about direction of roads and hunter trigger bands, incremental lines of red seas and various surface structures such as pericamata, prismless structure, enamel cuticle, enamel lamellae, enamel tufts, odontoblastic crosses and enamel spindle, dentino enamel junction, enamel cuticle which is also known as Nasmith's membrane, enamel rod ends, enamel caps and enamel brush. So all are various structures which is present in enamel. So it can be asked as a short note a short essay and a long essay so it's a very very important uh, session so i'll come up with enamel uh, formation or amylogenesis in my next video of enamel thank you